Dodge and the SRT brand have found a new way to cool that boosted air that's going into that Hemi engine. They call it the power chiller, but what is it? And how does an intercooler actually work? Find out today on this episode of Carbage. The idea of the intercooler is that it is going to reduce the temperature of the boosted air charge before it reaches your intake manifold. There are two ways to get this done, by either an air-to-air -air intercooler or an air-to-water intercooler. Keep in mind, if you're running an intercooled and turboed or supercharged engine, you're probably well aware of what these are. First, let's start with the simplest design, the air-to-air -air intercooler. An air-to-air -air refers to how the intercooler cools the charged air by using the core as a heatsink. Charged air passes through the tubes of the intercooler while ambient air flows over the tubes to remove the heat the charged air transfers to the intercooler tubes. These are further helped by the little fins or plates you see between the tubes. There are two distinct types of intercooler cores, the center portion where the cooling takes place, tube and fin and bar and plate. Tube and fin style is set up very similarly as your transmission cooler or engine oil cooler, where there are extruded oval tubes with fins pressed into place. This can lead to a lighter intercooler package since the extruded tubes will be smaller and stronger, but it is more prone to road damage. Even worse is that it will start to lose sealing as you increase boost pressures. You'll also get a smaller core as there is space lost from the sealing between the tubes and those end tanks. Bar and plate, on the other hand, is far stronger and more efficient at cooling charge air. You get more area because you can braze or weld the core rather than rely on a large metal seal that reduces its actual core size. It's also stronger thanks to using bar and plate over tubes to create the intercooler core. This not only reduces the chances of boost killing road damage, but can usually take far higher boost pressures than tube and fin. However, it is heavier. Then there is the air to water intercooler, and it is a super efficient design. Water is a far better way of transferring heat away from an object, and you can use a smaller intercooler than you would have to over the air to air. This reduces losses in boost pressure as you have a shorter route through the intake and you can make more power. Not only that, but some designs allow you to use a small chest to fill with ice and allow water to flow through, further cooling boosted air. You are also less reliant on keeping your vehicle moving since you don't need the air flowing over the intercooler to keep it cool. However, not only is the system heavier thanks to all the components involved, like the water pump, the water tank, the water, the heat exchanger, and it's also hard to package over an air to air. Despite that, air to water intercoolers are the preferred method of OE manufacturers that do use intercooling on their supercharged efforts, including Dodge and the Challenger SRT Demon. What the Demon does differently though, is how it further cools the liquid for the supercharger's integrated intercooler. This is where the SRT power chiller comes into play. Now famously, the power chiller says that it uses the air conditioning system to cool boosted charge air. It does this by passing the intercooler's coolant into a cooler that further reduces the temperature of the coolant further than what's possible with a regular heat exchanger. That chilled coolant is then sent to the supercharger's intercooler and reduces boosted air to a further 18 degrees Fahrenheit than what the ambient temperature would be with just the standard heat exchanger. This allows the Demon to run 14.5 PSI of boost with a 95 to 1 compression ratio of the 6.2 liter Hemi and produce up to 840 horsepower on 100 octane. Uh, unless you're running 91, then it's about 808. This isn't the first time an OE has thought about using the HVAC system to cool boosted air. Ford did this idea twice with two concept cars, the 1994 Mustang Mach 1 concept and the 2003 F-150 Lightning concept. However, Dodge is the only manufacturer between the two to bring it to fruition in the Challenger Demon. While the intercooler is the only way to cool boosted air to make it denser, the way that goal is achieved is just as different as supercharging and turbocharging are. Air to water intercoolers, though complicated and bulky, are the most efficient way of achieving that goal. If you want to make it even better, the HVAC system in your car or truck may provide that solution for the OEs and yourself, provided you are certified to handle Freon. Otherwise, you'll either have to buy a car or truck with their own power chiller, or have someone else put the kit on for you if you can find one. As always, find more tricks to pull out more power from the internal combustion engine we'll start to find more cars and trucks that can put down some incredible power numbers from the factory that were only possible from the aftermarket. And if you're interested in hearing more stuff like this, be sure to help us out by 
donating to our Patreon. Even as much as a dollar per month can help us out a lot. Honestly, if everybody in our subscriber count would just donate a dollar per month, we could film way more often, afford the travel, afford the equipment, and honestly do a lot more than what we're doing now. So again, if you want to see more stuff like this, go to patreon.com backslash garbage. Otherwise, please subscribe.